A 0.5 kilogram cart moves on a straight horizontal track. The graph of velocity v versus time t for the cart is given below. Part A. Indicate every time t for which the cart is at rest. This is pretty straightforward because we were given velocity as a function of time. So at any moment when the cart is at rest, its velocity will be equal to zero meters per second. So looking at the graph, the cart's velocity is equal to zero at t equals four seconds and at t equals 18 seconds. So those are going to be our two times for when the cart is at rest. Part B. Indicate every time interval for which the speed, the magnitude of velocity, of the cart is increasing. Well, we need to look at the graph and see when the cart is moving away from zero meters per second, either in the positive direction or the negative direction because we're only talking about speed. So at four seconds, the cart is at rest and after four seconds, the cart is speeding up to one meters per second in the negative direction. So from four meters, or from four seconds to nine seconds, the cart is speeding up. And also, the cart is moving away from zero at 18 seconds up until the 20 second mark. So those are gonna be our two intervals where the cart's speed is increasing. Part C, determine the horizontal position x of the cart at t equals 9 seconds if the cart is located at x equals 2 meters at t equals 0. Well, we're going to want to use a kinematics equation to calculate displacement under constant velocity conditions. That's going to be x equals x naught plus velocity in the x direction times time. But we don't really have a constant velocity, so what we're going to want to do to find the displacement while it's moving is calculate the area under the curve. So when we have a velocity versus time graph, the area under the curve is gonna represent displacement. So we have two segments to consider from zero to nine seconds. The first is going to be from zero to four seconds. So the displacement will be the area of a triangle, which is one half base times height. And for this first segment, we have one half, the base is four, and the height is going to be 0.8. For the next segment, we're talking about from time t equals 4 seconds to t equals 9 seconds. So this area will be 1 half, 4 to 9 is 5, and the height of the triangle is negative 1. So the areas, and also including the initial position, which was 2, we get a total displacement of 1.1 meters. Part D. On the axes below, sketch the acceleration a versus time t graph for the motion of the cart from t equals zero to t equals 25 seconds. All right, so in order to do part d, we're looking to plot acceleration. And from the velocity versus time graph, acceleration is going to be represented by the slope. So it looks like we have about five segments here where we have different slope values. So I'm gonna go ahead and label these segments one, two, three, four, and five. So down below, let's find the accelerations, AKA the slopes, for each of those segments. All right, so for acceleration one, the slope is negative, and we get negative 0.2 meters per second squared. For acceleration two, our slope is positive, and if we plug in the rise over run, we get an acceleration of 0.2 meters per second squared. Segment three has no slope, so the acceleration is zero. For segment four, we have a positive slope, and the acceleration is 0.4 meters per second squared. And for segment five, we again have a zero slope, so the acceleration is zero. Coming back down to our acceleration versus time graph, we now have each of our segments so we just need to plot a straight line for the amount of time that each segment lasts. So segment one is from zero to nine seconds and the acceleration is negative 0.2 meters per second squared. So from zero to nine seconds, we have that. And then from nine to 12 seconds, we have a positive acceleration 0.2 meters per second squared. And segment three lasts five seconds and we're at zero meters per second squared. And then segment four lasts just three seconds, 
and we have an acceleration of 4 meters per second squared, 0.4. And finally, for segment 5, which lasts 5 seconds, we have an acceleration of 0 meters per second squared. All right, moving on to part E, we have at from time t equals 25 seconds until the cart reaches the end of the track, the cart continues with constant horizontal velocity. The cart leaves the end of the track and hits the floor, which is 0.4 meters below the track. Neglecting air resist resistance, determine each of the following. One, the time from when the cart leaves the track until it first hits the floor. Well, for this we just want to use a kinematics equation that has acceleration in the vertical direction and displacement in the vertical direction. So that's going to be delta y equals one half acceleration in the y direction times t squared. We are trying to solve for time, so to rearrange this equation for t, we would multiply both sides by 2 and then divide by g, and then take the square root. So our equation for the time is going to look like this, and plugging in our values gives us a time of about 0.28 seconds. For part 2, the horizontal, find the horizontal distance from the end of the track to the point at which the cart first hits the floor. Well, we're going to use a kinematics equation again, but this time in the horizontal direction, and there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction, so we can neglect the acceleration term, which leaves us with just delta x equals velocity in the x direction times time. And we know the time it's going to take, that's going to be our 0.28 seconds that we just solved for, and the velocity that it's traveling at, we need to go back to our first graph to see how quickly it's moving at the 25 second mark. So when it's at 25 seconds, the cart is moving at 0.8 meters per second. Plugging those values into the equation, we get a total horizontal displacement of 0.23 meters.